Frank Costello, Mike Miranda, Bobby Manor, just a few famous names who served as consigliere of the Genovese crime family. But there is one mobster who is rarely discussed, who allegedly also held this position. His name was Alessandro Sandino Pandolfo. Let's check him out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today, we're going to take a quick look at the mysterious Genovese family mobster Sandino Pandolfo, a man who allegedly served as consigliere to Frank Costello. By 1937, with official family boss Charlie Luciano incarcerated, and high-ranking mobster Vito Genovese on the run in Italy when facing murder charges. It is said that Frank Costello became acting boss of the family, with Willie Moretti as acting underboss. But who was the consigliere at this time, of the crime family that would become known as the Genovese family? When Genovese mobster Joseph Alacci became a government witness, he would state that a mobster by the name of Sandino became the consigliere to Frank Costello. Historians believe that Sandino was in fact a mobster by the name of Alessandro Sandino Pandolfo. Research conducted by Eric Stonefelt from the Mob Archaeologist podcast provided some background on the mysterious Pandolfo. Alessandro Sandino Pandolfo was born in Naples, Italy in the late 1890s. Potentially, on July the 8th, 1897, according to his naturalisation papers. It is indicated that Pandolfo came to New York in the mid-1920s and lived at 25 Thompson Street. In 1927, Pandolfo married Angelina Marafino, whose family lived at 171 Thompson Street. By 1931, it is said that Pandolfo was part of the Genovese Strollo faction of the Masseria family. In 1940, Alessandro Pandolfo is listed as living at 71 Washington Square South near Greenwich Village. Genovese mobster Joseph Alacci would state that Pandolfo served as the family council, which has led to the theory that Pandolfo was the acting consigliere of the family for acting boss Frank Costello at this time. Interestingly, Joseph Falacci also states that Pandolfo was a personal counsellor for Anthony Tony Bendastrollo, who at the time was a captain in the crime family. It is unclear as to when Sandino Pandolfo became acting consigliere of the family, or if indeed he ever did serve in this role, but it is speculated that it happened when Frank Costello allegedly became acting boss in around 1937. Alessandro Sandino Pandolfo would pass away in 1948, but information in FBI files inaccurately lists him still being alive in the 1950s. With regards to Pandolfo's criminal activities, it is understood that Pandolfo was a prominent figure in the Italian lottery, as seen in the following FBI file. Concerning Sandino Pandolfo, T8 advised on February 21, 1958, that Sandino was a big-time hoodlum in the Greenwich Village in New York City and was an associate of Tony Bender, true name Anthony Strollo, and Johnny Roberts, as well as Johnny the Bug Stapelli. He advised that Pandolfo was a big man in the Italian lottery and died about two years ago. T8 advised that Pandolfo has a younger brother known as Carlos, or Don Carlo, who is a minor underworld character of no standing, that hangs out at Rocco's restaurant on Thompson Street, New York City. Another FBI file lists Pandolfo as connected with the powerful mobster Oni Madden. Madden had been a prominent New York gangster who moved to Hot Springs, Arkansas in the mid to late 1930s. The slightly obscured FBI file reads, T11 advised Sandino Pandolfo is a New York racketeer who visits in Hot Springs and who made the Mint in New York City, that on one occasion he made the purchase of a large diamond pendant containing over 20 diamonds from Madden, 
and although the pendant was worth $10,000 or more, Pandolfo purchased it for practically nothing. Joseph Valacci also appears confused about when Sandino Pandolfo died. As stated previously, official death records state that Alessandro Sandino Pandolfo passed away in 1948, but Valacci would testify that in 1952, Pandolfo was brought in by Anthony Tony Bendestrollo to be a partner in a heroin deal that Valacci was involved in. Valacci had believed that he was to be a 50-50 partner in the deal with Tony Bender, but that without him knowing, Anthony Strollo brought in further partners. Valacci's testimony on this would go as follows. The Chairman, how were you paid off? Mr. Valacci, well, now, Tony sent for me about a few weeks after, and he went on to tell me that, how did I want it, or I will explain that. He went on to tell me about Vito Genovese, Sandino and Vinnie Mauro and John the Bug and he made all these partners. Mr Alderman, that is Tony Bender you mean? Mr Valacci, Tony Bender, yes sir. Mr Alderman, he had a discussion with you and told you that you had a number of partners that you didn't know about before, is that right? Mr Valacci, Vito and Tony Bender, myself, Pasquale Pagano, Sandino, John Stapelli, and Pasquale Macchio, and Vinnie Mauro, and one other I couldn't recall. In other words, I found nine partners. Mr Alderman, and you expected at that time that Tony Bender would split it with you 50-50, and you would take care of Pasquale Pagano. Mr Valacci, I would take care of my end, and he would take care of his end. And then he also hit me with this. He said, Vito Genovese owed Frank Costello $20,000. And he said, you know, we make a good showing and we take it off the top and we will pay the debt for him. Mr. Alderman, in other words, he cut in Vito Genovese for $20,000. Mr. Valacci, besides his share, he paid Frank Costello $20,000 that Vito was supposed to have owed Frank Costello $20,000. Mr. Alderman, this was taken off the top. Mr. Valacci, yes, sir. It is, of course, reasonable to speculate that Joseph Valacci was misremembering the date of this heroin deal as he was testifying about an event that occurred just over a decade before. Based on Joseph Valacci stating that Sandino Pandolfo was acting consigliere to Frank Costello and knowing that Pandolfo passed away in 1948, then it leaves a period from 1948 to 1957 when there was no apparent consigliere in what we now call the Genovese family. As we know, in 1957, after Vito Genovese's ascension to become boss of the family, he promoted Mike Miranda to the position of consigliere. But there is little information to determine who, if anyone, was holding that position in the nine-year period between 1948 to 1957. Mob historian Eric Stonefeld from the Mob Archaeologist podcast has also discovered an interesting connection between Alessandro Sandino Pandolfo and Vincent Giganti. When Pandolfo's brother Carlo became a naturalized US citizen, one of the witnesses was a man called Andrea Grippa. Andrea Grippa was the father of Olympia Grippa, the future wife of Vincent Chin Giganti. Stonefeld's research also shows a potential link to the Gigantes in Pandolfo's own bloodline, going back to Naples, possibly on his mother's side. In addition, the mother of Sandino Pandolfo's wife, Angelina, had a maiden name listed as Giganti. A slightly different spelling, but records indicate that historically, Giganti with an I and Giganti with an E were interchangeable. In New York City, the Giganti family, including future mobsters Vincent and Mario, lived just a few doors along from the Pandolfos on Thompson Street. And also, the Giganti brothers, Vincent and Mario's start and rise in the criminal world, coincided in the time period of Alessandro Sandino Pandolfo being the family's acting consigliere. Finally, if Alessandro Pandolfo was in fact 
acting boss Frank Costello's acting consigliere from around 1937. Then, if it is said that Costello indeed became official boss in 1947, then Alessandro Sandino Pandolfo was official consigliere for the family for around a year until he died in 1948. Anyway, all of this is just some food for thought. Let me know your thoughts on the historical lineage of the Genovese crime family's consigliere position in the comments below. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.